I think we're at 11 Pacific Standard Time. So I'm going to throw it over to you. Great, great. And I will throw it right back as soon as I do a quick <laughs> welcome to everybody. Um, I just want to say thank you to everyone. Thank you for the folks, uh, the attendees for showing up. Thank you to all the speakers, especially, of course, for this one, Nicole and Kim. Alicia put together an incredible lineup for this summit. Um, hands up in the air for that. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I just have to say a special shout out to our two lead sponsors. Women in Soccer, I'm sure you guys have heard of them, and Goal 5. These are excellent organizations. Everybody should definitely join Women in Soccer. Their membership program is free, and it's a network that will expand your soccer opportunities and will bring us all together, regardless of what you do in the field, in the classroom, what have you. It'll bring everybody, all women and girls who are involved in the game together. Um, I also have to bring us home and let you guys know about America Scores, Bay Area and National. We are in 12 different cities in the US, 306 different school partnerships, 522 teams, 1,022 coaches, 12,000, wow. over 12,000, we call them poet athletes because we bring <laughs> soccer to them, of course, <laughs> but we bring poetry for expression and community service to give back and for empowerment. And we have about 43,000 poems written by kids. Wow. And so I'm gonna close my welcome with a poem by Mena M, a fifth grader from Alba oh. Elementary in Milwaukee. And she writes a poem called This or That is That. In soccer, I like scoring. I give the strongest kick to the ball. My coach is not snoring. The referee makes a loud call. I think halftime is boring. I just want to play and give it my all. The goalie blocks the shot. He, uh, he is as fast as a cat. My cleats hit the ground. Splat, splat, splat. I like soccer, and that is that. I think she says it well for all of us. Enjoy the session. And thank you, Kim and Nicole, for being with us this morning. Take it away, yeah. Alicia. Thanks, Angela. That was a great poem to get us started, for sure. I am going to make this short and sweet. I am going to introduce our two fabulous speakers, Nicole Hercules and Kim Crabb. The E is silent, which I just learned. And I'm not going to ever forget that. Um, I am going to let these two lovely ladies go ahead and talk um, about their background in soccer. And then we're going to have questions. And if, if you have questions along the way, please put them in the chat. Angela is going to be looking at the chat and making sure, and the Q&A box and making sure we keep up um, with any questions. So thank you ladies so much for being here and please take it away. Wonderful. Well, thank you both. I'm going to, um, Kim, if you want to start while I share my screen, sure, just do an sure. introduction. So uh, my name is Kim Crabb. Yes, with the silent E. Uh, that name gets jacked up quite a bit. Um, but within the soccer world, my nickname is Krabby. So um, I don't take it personal when people uh, get it get it twisted up, that, that last name. But I'm originally from Northern Virginia, um, but I'm currently residing in Wilmington, North Carolina, in which I uh, direct a community outreach program under the umbrella of the Wilmington Hammerheads Youth FC. Um, and it's a very unique uh, position because I get to go into the community and work with the at-risk and underserved um, youth within the community. Um, the program has been in existence for about eight years. I've been in Wilmington for nine. Um, it is my baby. Um, yeah, I'm very passionate about what I do. Um, a lot of times I try to keep my soccer history out of the way, but I am the first African-American female to play at the national level of soccer. So some of that does come in play with, with some of the leadership roles that I, um, that I uh, you know, govern here in Wilmington. And um, it, it's just an honor to be able to, to share through some of these summits and some of the Zooms during such rough times that everybody's going through. And I'm looking forward for uh, Nicole and I to share quite a bit with you guys today. And again, if you have any questions, make sure you shoot those out. And um, thank you for having us. 
Yes. So I, I always enjoy when I get to jump on a, you know, something, anything with Kim Crab because the work she does is always outstanding. I've been able to, to witness it myself, but I am Nicole Hercules. I am the president of the Rochester City Soccer League. Um, it's a program that is a holistic soccer program uh, for inner city youth that makes sure that we're equaling the playing field. Um, I also have a company called NMH Consulting where we do it at a national level, making sure that we represent underserved and underrepresented communities. And I'm also the first female chair of the United Soccer Coaches Black Soccer Coaches Advocacy Group. Um, so our session today, we're so excited to present because it's on something that means so much to us. For Kim and I, leadership is something because the vision that we have to have to move into spaces and to create things that allow the next generation of women and girls to become leaders and cultures that allow them to be cultivated and, and allow them to, to be nurtured into what they will one day be um, is so important and valuable to us, not even just for our girls, but for all of our, our players. Um, so this presentation is gonna kind of encompass a lot of things, the value of leadership, the value of culture, um, looking at individual styles of personalities. Um, and then we're gonna take you guys through a very simple blueprint of how you can kind of create your own culture. So we'll keep it really you know, fun, light, conversational. Um, but it's also this very simple things that you guys can hopefully take with you. So we're gonna start this first slide on the value of leadership. And so the value of leadership, guys, is just the ability to lead people to accomplish you know, a vision or a mission. And we, we just included a couple examples here of certain different types of leadership. You know, there's that encouraging leader who just offers instruction, guidance, and is always giving you uh, leadership. And you can kind of think about the one that may represent you the most. I know the ones that I'm good at, and I know the ones that I'm very bad at. So there's always, you know, a space where you can really identify what your strength is as a leader and use that. Um, administrative leaders, they're able to, I gotta move myself here, organize and follow through on every essential task and ensure that they are completed well and on time. You know, there's the community leader that's a people person who's really about serving the community and the culture. You have your pioneering leader who kind of steps out and says, man, there's a space that's missing here. Let me go out here and go out here and create it. Um, I have a vision for what needs to be done and I'm just going to go out here and make this thing happen. And they have, have that kind of entrepreneurial spirit to make it happen. Um, there's the strategic leaders that break down visions into manageable tasks. Um, and then you have your team leader that really is able to work with others, recruit team members, and, you know, lead people to an accomplished task. So I can say for myself, and Kim and I will chat this for a little bit, the ones that I am and the ones that I'm kind of bad at, you know, I would say, you know, I'm an encouraging leader, I'm a community leader, and I'm a pioneering leader. And then Kim, I'll let you go into which ones you are, and then we can kind of talk about why those are the ones that we're really strong in. Yeah, well, I think, you know, like you said, the the ability to lead is is the main thing. And even though, you know, we 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 looked at some of these different different leaderships and thought, oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm more of a community leader or I'm this or that. Really, we we exemplify all of them. We just are not stronger in some of the other ones than than others. But definitely, you know, I, I looked at all the positions. I mean, the, the leadership positions and I said, I mean, really, we, we exemplify a little bit of all of them. Yes, I would definitely say that I'm more of a community leader. Um, but, you know, I mean, we take these positions with honor. And, and again, we're just our ability to lead. I mean, just in a small example, when you're a line leader in school or a captain on your team, mm -hmm. you know, that ability to lead, you take that position with honor so that you can have a, a better outcome. And I think that when we look at all of these different ones, there's just something that you can grab from each of them that pretty much we exemplify on, on a daily as being leaders within the community, so. Yeah, and I look at it and I think about some of the things, like when I start an organization, I'm always thinking about the things that I'm going to bring that are my sure. strengths and then the things where, you know, I'm not as good. So the administrative stuff, I'm a big picture thinker, you know, I'll go into some of the different um, personality types and how they work. Um, pioneering, of course, you know, Kim, I know with your program, you have a trailer park league. So you literally went into these communities and gave the community what they needed. So it's stepping out there figuring out what's needed and then making it happen. So I think we've done the same thing. Um, in the city of Rochester, we have <laughs> 28 high schools that we have put together to form one school, to one school team. Um, so we also had to form a league to provide opportunities for those girls to play because they just haven't been able to play. Um, so when it comes to a lot of the big picture things, I love doing that stuff. But when it comes to the administrative stuff, 
I always make sure I find someone who's operational who can kind of help with some of that. And I think that that goes back to, you know, you want to, you want to build a good team. You know what I mean? We can't, we can't lead all by ourselves. You know, we're there for a reason. And for, like I said, for, for a better outcome, you have to have good people on your team. You have, you have to, you have to build a good team. And so I have people, I, I'm not savvy with computers, you know, so when we do daily check-in on Saturdays and I've got 200 kids and I'm going, hey, watch, I, they're like, coach, we got it. We got computers on site. We got data in case you need it for a, a grant. I mean, everything's there. Those are my weaknesses. There's no way in the world that I would be able to do everything. But again, there, there are different different uh, qualities within each of those leadership roles that we do exemplify, so. Wonderful, so I'm gonna move on to the next one, which is the value of culture. Let me move myself again. I keep placing us over the, uh, the definitions here. So the value of culture, it's basically creating a way of life, you know, a way in which we learn to do things. Um, and a lot of times it can be learned because we're gonna create it some of the times that we're, we're building things and we're, we're as leaders, we're saying, well, this is the environment I wanna create this is how I want to nurture my players, my team, my community. You know, so we looked for, you know, attitudes and values and morals and goods and customs um, that are shared by society. We also look into an integrated pattern of human knowledge, belief, and behavior. Um, with the Rochester City Soccer League that we started, um, we started it because we were looking at the poor graduation rate that was happening in the city of Rochester. And we said, that's not the example that my girls display. So we want to change that narrative and that attitude towards the girls in our community. We've had valedictorians and salutatorians every year with exception for this year or last year, sorry, because we didn't play this year. And our girls thought they failed us. And it's like, no, you guys are all in the top 10 of your class. Oh. You're doing an amazing job. But the standard that they set has been outstanding. So that's a part of our culture where now these kids believe that Man, we got to have a valedictorian or salutatorian every year. You know, that's part of the, the culture. Mm -hmm. We also try to change the narrative, right? A lot of the time there's this negative connotation of people's behavior. So again, going into those integrating patterns of the human dynamics in certain communities, the implicit bias and how they play a role. And we try to change that narrative altogether by flooding people with the positive messages and the positive um results that we receive from the league that we've created. So whether that's our kids performing well in school, whether that's making sure that we, and actually I'm gonna let Kim talk about her Friday Night Lights because I copied her because what she was doing was amazing. So I'm not gonna go into that, but it's, it's, well, it's something, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, it's one of those things that, you know, when we started our league and talking about the pioneering side of it, the culture was also developed because, you know, the year, probably the year before there were four kids who were, who were murdered and our community. So we, we didn't have time to wait anymore. We had to start it. Um, mm -hmm. So we also started the league again for b building a community where our, our players were safe and we're setting that standard of what it can potentially look like. And, and you know, we're, you were talking about the value of culture and, and the way of life. And I, and I had to write this down because, you know, it's the culture that helps to make the program. You know what I'm saying? It's not us as the leaders that create the culture. I think that it's the culture itself. And you were talking about um, how important it was, you know, for these kids to be safe. And, and that was a part of my Friday Night Lights program. Um, we weren't able to go into some of the other areas within the community because we deal with a lot of transportation issues. So my vision was to bring soccer to the kids and that's what the outreach program you know itself does i go into the schools i organize recess giving them an opportunity i go into these communities the trailer parks so the friday night lights was just a vision and i didn't know if we could pull it off and that goes back to some of the leadership <laughs> um, styles that we were talking about you know sometimes you just have to go for it and you know trial and error um it was something that was positive and it was very beneficial to not just the kids, but that, that community and that neighborhood and community. And, itself. Mine. and I mean, you know, so well, I mean, how, how beneficial it is on a Friday night, there are so many other areas that these kids could be in, you know what I mean? And here we are bringing soccer into the community. So we know that the majority, in fact, I did, we're going to be participating within within our Friday night lights, um, and then the hurricane came and washed that area away. So um, we 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 definitely uh, count on our on our outreach city league on Saturdays, um, being uh, 
a, a safe environment, and um, and that's a big part of the culture, as we were we were talking about. Um, you know, when when you're consider the leader in the community, you have you have so many eyes on you, and mm -hmm. and when you're dealing with at risk and underserved areas, there are so many components that are key. And I think when you're building a culture, trust is is a big issue. And I and I was looking at all the different components that we were and characteristics we put in there. And I just think that trust is is a big one uh, within people in the community, uh, within your 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 soccer programs, within your clubs, all of that is important for for you know programs like this to sustain and for us as leaders, you know, to continue doing what we're doing. And I think it's, it's talking about I think we'd be remiss if we didn't mention that this generation of youth, they're different. They're in Fired and active in a way that we've never seen before. I mean, I this 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 year scared me sometimes because I would get pictures from my players who would be protesting, and they'd show me pictures of getting those shot with rubber pellet guns. And I'm like, guys, be safe. But they're different. They stand for what's right. They're they're just a different breed of inspirational kids who are going to do amazing things. And it's so important for us to keep to create cultures where we're, we're allowing these kids to feel empowered yeah. in that, where we're giving them their space to be 100% who they're going to be once they leave our programs so that they're ready to just take off, fly, and do the amazing things that they're doing already. Outstanding kids. Let me move to this next slide because I know we'll stay here all day. <laughs> yeah, but this is all good stuff. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. to go back to look at some of these, these uh, slides within your PowerPoint, I mean, I know that I'm gonna save them because they really do uh, pinpoint some really good areas within leadership and, and culture. Well, you'll see a little bit more because we're actually I'm gonna, we're using it for the black soccer coaches, so you'll you will see it a oh, little bit more. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> and I'm gonna use. It. <laughs> and actually, since talking about that, I think this slide is really important because I mean, if you're a player, if you're a coach, if you're a leader. Um, Knowing who, who you are as an individual, knowing who your players are and how you can relate to each other. And I, and I was telling Kim this the other day, and, and I was happy that Kim didn't notice that it was a mistake that I made coming in as, as the chair in the, in the year. I, my, my relational style is I'm very independent. I'm very social, but very independent when it comes to developing and building ideas. I'm also an abstract thinker. So, when we're, so let me just take you guys through this first. A relational style is how you relate to people, right? Information assimilation style is how you process information. Decision-making style, how do you make your decisions? And then the environmental style, how do you relate to the world? So for me, I'm an independent, you know, very social, but I'm kind of that person who, when I have an idea of what I want to do, um, I need to spend some time filtering things out. And I also need to spend a lot of time listening. It takes a lot. The mm -hmm. programs that Kim and I have created, um, it came from, not from us, but from conversations with every single person who's in our league, our parents, our players, um, our colleagues, their conversations. And for, for a long time, people would be like, you waste so much time talking to people. But for programs like Kim and I, we value people. We value relationships. That's how we have a pulse on what's needed. Um, so it's really important for, for us to always have that connection to what our kids need. What do the girls need? What are they thinking? What are they feeling? You know, and then for this assimilation style, I'm very abstract oriented. So for people who are, you know, they need a plan and they need a system, my adaptive style may not work for them because they need to see their plan place and what the plan and the vision is. So a lot of times having that structure in place in advance, so especially when you're starting out and you're building something, it's really important for you know people who have different learning styles to know how they fit into things. Some people are okay with things being free flowing like myself, you know, I have this big Gregorious personality and I'm okay with just kind of flying and making things happen as kind of a reverse engineer. But as a leader, I can't do that without recognizing how it's going to impact my community, my players, how I can best get them, you know, indoctrinated into what it is that we're creating so that they feel a place of ownership on it. Because again, we may be leaders, but we're leaders of leaders. Everybody's a leader. And we have to make sure that we're able to reach that population, whether it's our players, whether it's our community, whether it's our team. Um, and this is something that it, it's, it's always going to evolve. 
but I think this individual style of how we relate to people is really important. What do you think, Kim? Well, I mean, you want people to buy into what you're doing. I mean, that's the bottom line. So as a leader, you know, your style of leadership some, uh, sometimes may not do that. Mm -hmm. So that, that goes back to building a good team, you know, because I would say I would probably be more abstract as well, you know what I mean? But there, there's just times when, you know, I need, I need the, the, you know, the help from members on my team to, to, to keep me focused and, and making sure that, you know, I'm getting the best out of our team for, for the vision that we're trying to implement. But, you know, um, the individual styles are definitely important. I mean, um, again, you know, if you have a good team, the areas that you're, you're lacking in strength, then they should be able to, to pick you up and, and keep you sustained and on track, as we say. I'm going to do a quick check for questions here just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Do we miss any questions or do we answer I, them? I think you have okay. come in, but, but I think just, just some folks that are agreeing, maybe Alicia and them and, uh, and Angela are getting some. Yeah, well, yeah. actually, uh, Angela, do you want to go? No, it's okay. Go oh, ahead. okay. Um, a couple, Nicole, um, everybody wants to know if they can, uh, have a set of your slides <laughs> if you'll be sharing. Kim them. told me this. Kim <laughs> was like, Kim told me this. <laughs> I, told, I told you last night. I said, somebody's going to want that. So you did say that. that. I'm like, what do you mean? It's so simple. <laughs> um, I'm speaking on my behalf of myself too. I want a set. <laughs> so, um, um, yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, go ahead. And then I'm, I know there's, there's tons more questions. Ansel, did you have any other questions besides? wanting slides too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't just for me. Oh, uh, I, well, I know. And, um, I asked her last yeah. night though. I told her somebody is She did tell me that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, makes it concrete. Um, there was another question from an attendee that an anonymous attendee who asked, what if you're the more quiet person and newer person on the team? Like how would you become the leader? I'll tell you what, the quiet person in the room to me sometimes is always the one who is so observant and needs to recognize their skill set within. Shy doesn't mean that you can't be impactful. You know, I always think of like a Ruth Gator uh, Ginsburg who, you know, they said she was this little pure, you know, little lady and she kind of had this really quiet personality, but look at the power that she held, you know, the type of impact that she had. So uh, shyness, I would say to the person who's asking that question, you can be shy, but what is it that you're bringing? What is it that's your strength that you can do that you can, because I've, I've had some of the shy, the shy people on my team are the ones who you, you can watch in their actions, what it is that they're doing. You know, maybe and everyone's different, but there's there's something. There's something that they can contribute. So I would actually probably have to ask a few more questions. But as a leader of someone, if I see someone who is shy, I would need to spend some time with that person, get to know them so that I would then learn how I can bring out whatever's best in them so that I can better you know, help them be impactful in whatever it is that they're looking to do. Um, but without yeah. really knowing the person and it, it's hard for me to answer that. But I, I would definitely, someone who's shy, I spend a lot of time I would say annoying, but eventually we will develop a wonderful relationship, right? I know, you know, what we can, what we can pull I, out I'll of I'll piggyback on that. I think, you know, as leaders, as coaches, that it's our job to kind of observe that and try, like you said, uh, Nicole, try to see if we can bring, bring out the best in them. I include everybody. I mean, I've had parents say, I'm, I have kids dancing. I dance. You know what I mean? I have kids. They, my, I have parents say, I've never seen my kid dance. I've never, you know, we're out on the field. And I, we I, have parents I, dancing. I bring, yeah, I bring everybody in at the end of a session and we, we're on a feel good moment and I'm trying to include everyone. And I do that within a session as well. So there are just times, but, and I took it way back to a, being a line leader. You know what I mean? When the teacher may have chose the the shyest one in the back to be the line leader for the day. You <laughs> assumed that position, you know what I mean? You, you were in charge for whatever, going to the cafeteria, whatever, you know what I mean? So, I mean, I, that's just a very little example, but I'm saying as leaders and as coaches, it is our job to kind of to kind of see that and see how we can bring out the best in them. And mm -hmm. um, so those shy ones, they, they come to the forefront at, at some point, that's for sure. 
You guys don't know this about Kim, but I've watched many of her sessions. I call her the kid whisperer because she brings something out of kids. Like she's fun. She's high energy. Like I'll be walking by and like, want to, it's like, I want to jump in and like, just have a great time. Like not only are the kids developing their skill stuff and she has some absolute savage monsters that she develops on her team. They can ball, but they have a great time doing it. it smiles on their faces. Like this this section here, I think Kim is a master of. She understands people. She gets them. You can be shy. You can be, you know, loud. Um, but she can relate to everyone, and that's just a skill in of itself. And I saw a question here. Someone was saying, um, "What if you are a DOC and other leaders in uh, in your team are loud and speaking over you?" This is going to be something that you're going to have to learn. I'm a recovering people. I'm a recovered people pleaser. So sometimes you allow that to happen, but it's something that you're going to have to work on. And sometimes I think it's also valuable to have direct conversation with people, because if you're working with people and it's a team dynamic, you want to make sure that everyone's able to shine at their best. If it's, if, if, if that's a culture that you're in, sometimes you're in a culture where that's not you know, respected and that's not honored. Um, but as a human being and making sure that you are a hundred percent everything that you need to be as you walk into a space, you can't allow yourself to, do, to be dismissed. And it can be very uncomfortable um, when you're trying to learn to speak up and to not allow someone to speak over you and to, to hang on one second, let's pause for a moment, you know, and, and then allow yourself the space to, to talk. Um, but that's going to have to be something that's learned sometimes if you're not comfortable um, with kind of the, the conflict of how you deal with, with some of these personalities that railroad. Um, it takes time to learn how you can navigate that um, through how your personality is and then just through how you can just communicate uh, your point in a way where, you know, you, you're building that relationship with that person to understand, hey, you know, I need to be heard and seen too. Kim, well, how, what do you think about that, Kim? Well, I mean, I mean, there's times when you know when you need to implement and sometimes you don't. There's times that I don't even talk. I just listen. Mm -hmm. I listen and I and I just kind of strategically know when it's time for me to implement maybe what I've been thinking the entire time or, uh, you know, do you wait until the judge asks you, <laughs> ask you the question? You know what I mean? Sometimes you have to interject and um, and say, and I, I think, think I'll let me finish that's my, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. We ain't worried about so no DOCs. <laughs> we Every culture is different, club. though. I know we're the DOCs. <laughs> Come coach with no, them. I'm just joking. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's um, and exp and I I don't want to do the gender thing, but especially for women, right? Uh, and sometimes there's moments when you know I like to be the same way all the time. So I'm a smiley person, but when I feel that disrespect the smile goes away, right? And there's a sternness that comes in where we have to demand that type of respect. We have to demand that we're heard. And especially in this day and age, like the time of, of people walking over other people is unacceptable. Um, so learning your voice and how to speak up is something that I think is an individual journey, but a very important one, an uncomfortable one, but an important journey for anyone that feels like they're getting spoken over. Do some research, work on um, you know how you can project more, work on you know, just making sure that you, your, ver your voice is heard because it's important. It's important. Everybody's voice is important to be heard. So be the one to helps. raise your hand in class. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this one here is just talking about um, the value of building your culture and how you pretty much do that. And my friend Jen's on here and I was telling you guys about her Wheatland Chai Light program. Her father actually just retired after I want to say 29 or 28 years, but the, man, the culture that they've been able to create for that community, not only do they have a, dy a dynasty on the soccer end, but the traditions and the cultures, you know, they would have, you know, this traditional midnight practice and man, their fan support's amazing. They would have games hours away and you would still see, you know, the light blue everywhere. They created this culture that, and, and I, I would travel to watch her team play. I'm on the section five committee. So I have to watch sectional games so I can hand out the awards. And I would always make sure I got her games because her culture is that amazing. The energy that you feel like, and I'm, I'm, and I'm an outsider. I know her and I know her father and they're dynamic human beings, but I make sure every year that I see one or two of their games because you just want to feel a part of it. It's special when you create something that's unique. Um, so that's why when we're talking about this, the value of building your culture, it transforms people's lives. 
when you're able mm -hmm. to really get people to buy into something that allows them to excel and to thrive, when you have a vision that, a lot, that sees people and it sees the community first. You know, Kim and I in our group, we say community first all the time. And sometimes mm -hmm. people aren't aligned in that vision. And if they don't fit, they don't fit because it's so important that we keep that positive energy towards what it is that we're building. And the mission is always gonna be aligned with, you know, our people and our communities. So these are just some of the ways, like the same way you would, you would form your business that you would wanna come up with how you're gonna create your culture, you know, and thinking about what matters to you, but most important, what matters to the people on your team, the young girls, the young women, um, the community that you wanna create, what, what, what does it feel like? What does it look like? And before I keep talking, I love this stuff, so I can talk forever on this, but Kim, I'll let you kind of come in here before we kind of go slide to slide to explain all of these different- No, I mean, I mean, you broke it down perfectly. I mean, you got to have, you know, your vision, my vision is to make a difference, you know, in the lives and to unify the community. I mean, you got to have a good vision. You know, of course, that's, that's something that you're continuing to work on. And, and absolutely a mission that's attainable, you know, I, I want the equal, equal, the, the, the playing field for everybody. I want any youth that are within our community to have an uh, and an opportunity to play, you know, mm -hmm. uh, free of financial, you know, worries or hopefully, you know, correcting the transportation issues or any of the issues that may be forbidding them to experience such an opportunity, you know, that's my mission on a daily, you know, impact the kid, you know, uh, keep them on the, on the right path because there's so many life lessons that come from what we do. So, I mean, uh, visions, missions, goals, purposes, all of that is so important. And um, again, we, we are, as leaders, we have to uh, continue to help implement all of that. So, but that, I like the way you broke that down. So I need to have that one too. <laughs> that was the one last night. That, that was the one that I could not see last night. So. Oh, to see it. okay. Yeah. You did say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I'll tell you, it's the clarity is the most important thing. And I know for myself, I'm a, I'm a big picture thinker. So it's never like there's one thing I want to do. It's like a million and one thing. So I really have to spend time with this because if I'm not clear on this, my girls aren't clear, my teams aren't mm -hmm. clear, my coaching community is not clear. And sometimes it takes me a very long time to filter things and create things. And I'm okay with that because I know that at the end of the day, once it's done, it's done and it's strong and it's powerful and it's clear and everyone who's involved is empowered and has ownership in a way that allows them to thrive on their highest level. So I'm okay with a lot of people want to rush it and things like that, but just really having the clarity on how you do these things. So these are some of the questions that you can ask yourself and you, know, you can think about it now, of course, but for a mission, I didn't put a definition. I just kind of wanted to put questions out there so you can think about it. What, uh, what, what do we do? You know, what do we serve? Um, how do we serve? You know, these are questions that you really need to sit with, really sit with, like, you know, let it get into your soul, let your spirit come out of it, you know, um, and the same with your vision. What are your hopes and dreams? You know, what problems are, are we solving for the greater good? Who and what are we, we inspiring to change, right? So these are some of the really important questions to, to ask. Kim, do you have anything on, on this? Yep. Yeah, um... You know, like you said, sometimes it's it's more that you're adding to your vision list or your mission list, you know, but again, at the end of the day, I mean, it's for the better good of, of the community um, that you're serving, you know what I mean? The kids, the soccer team or your program or your club or vice versa, but um, yes, healing communities through the universal power of soccer, that's, that's, you said that last night and I was like, boom, there it is right there, mm. you know? Mm. And there's a question here. So let me, let me pull this question up here. Um, one of the biggest challenges, particularly in women's soccer is how to keep from losing part oh yes, participants in the game oh. when they reach high school age and have so many other distractions in their life. How can we encourage them to continue playing the game into their late teens and adulthood? For my community, I know that was an issue because there wasn't a league uh, that really addressed what the girls needed. Um, so we had to create that. And I'll, I'll be honest, I have a high school girls team. I have, you know, college players, but there is a gap. 
right? So I have really young players from five to around 14, but it's a strange age group from like 15 to, you know, where I have the kids who have already been playing, but I have it, my job. And one of my goals with the girls that I have now with this, with this initiative is to keep them engaged, to keep having conversations with them. So what I've done, and I know a lot of different people have, I have a youth advisory board and I ask my girls exactly what they want, you know, exactly what they need through the league. I ask their parents, you know, we talk to the school so that now it's something that they want. It's not something that we're creating and just thinking, oh, all girls need this. It's like, what do you need? How can we nurture your growth in this sport? Um, and I know for us, it may be a little bit different because again, Kim and I try to create programs that are holistic to community needs. Some people may be coaches for a competitive team, so that may not be a focus. Um, but for us, it's really making sure that not only are we, are we providing access and opportunity for our players, but that they're heard and seen. Um, and I'm hoping that that's what keeps them in the game. I haven't done it yet because we're just starting there, but I'm hoping that that's going to be the solution. And I think that's why pioneering leaders are important um, because as of right now, that's a global problem. That's not even just a global problem, a national problem. Mm -hmm. Everyone, this is something everybody's talking about. So a lot of us are going to have to step out, figure out, you know, what's going to work for our community and share best, best practices. Um, some there's, you know, the girl, the GA, you know, Leslie Galmore and, you know, Ashley um, Comer has put together a phenomenal league where they have girls empowered and leading and running the show. You know, we're all going to have to learn from each other on how we can address this issue because it is a problem. So hopefully we can all stay well, uh, in collaboration mode. Well, with me, you know, I try to, because I mean, let's face it. I mean, we're going to be able to do this for as long as we can. So we're looking for leaders coming behind us. So I, I consider myself building leaders. You know what yes. I mean? Um, preparing these kids so that I can pass the baton off. Um, but it, it is factual when they get to be about that age, there's so much going on and, you know, they, they lose interest or I, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't exactly know what it is because like you said, we're working, I, I work with inner city, but under our umbrella with the club, I think that age group, they just, they just start doing different things. Get, they got kids getting into lacrosse. They're doing the arts. But I try to encourage my kids to possibly get into maybe refereeing. So mm -hmm. they're still, you know, a part of the game. Um, if they can do refereeing, um, if they feel like maybe the next level is too much, playing rec ball for fun, you know, because once the fun is out of it, and I think by the time they're that age, you know, it, it's, <laughs> I don't even want to say the wrong thing, but I mean, once they get to that age, I mean, there's, it's so competitive and, and the fun is no longer there. You know, I've had a lot of girls tell me, you know, it's just not fun anymore, you know? So, um, you know, again, you, if you can, if you can get into some, if you, there's some refereeing uh, sessions or, or courses in your area, maybe try to lead them that way so that they're still the game, volunteer, I have all my kids come back and volunteer within my program, you know, so any way you can kind of keep them in, in the game, you know, to some degree that may help and maybe their love for the game will change and they'll come back to it or, you know, what have you, but there are, you know, there are some ways that we can kind of keep them in there. And I, again, I'm trying to build as many leaders as I can because I'm with hopes that this program will continue um, you know, to sustain for a long time because it's so necessary to have programs such as this within these communities. So, and Kim, I loved what you said about building players because um, I know with, with my girls, like I think that they could be CEOs right now. Like they're just absolute bosses, right? And mm -hmm. it, it's funny. I was mm -hmm. building my board, and I had a, a, a company come in to help, you know, with some of these things. So they were interviewing some of my girls' players, and I got a call right away, and they're like who are these mega giants that you're forming? And I was like, I'm not forming them. That's, mm -hmm. that's how they're made. That's, that, that's just mm -hmm. them. Like they're honestly, this generation, and I, I don't want to say it's scary, but it's, it's exciting, you know? And I think we have to really remain, you know, locked into these kids, to these communities and making sure that, they, that the world will be a better place with this generation. I know that for sure. I know that for sure. And I'm just going to jump in the preface for quick and, and bypass this uh, purpose and intention or aim or reason for doing something or for allowing something to happen. Okay. I'll go to this next one here. We'll just kind of stick go into here real quickly um, for us again. And I know there's some more competitive coaches and things like that, but for Kim and I, I have a rock league and Kim has 
you know, rock and you know, some more competitive players. But when I, we talk about our core values and attitudes, it's things like this, you know, when we're talking about um, solidarity and things like that, a belief in peace and harmony. I like things to work in a way where it's fun and, and it just, there's almost a kindred affinity to how things move. Um, there's interdependence where everyone is able to show up and be powerful in their own space. And it's hard to crave that sometimes because when you come from a scarcity mentality, there's so many coaches or people or even girls who are like, if I, if, if I have to dim my light for you and it's like, no, no one has to dim their light. Everyone strive to be phenomenal, you know, and let's work together, encourage each other. Our, it's, it's, there's a different space and my phone is going off here. <laughs> there's space for everybody to be who they need to be. So, um, and then, you know, a mutual understanding of cooperation and respect, you know, then going on to the values and attitudes of cultures. I think one of the most important ones that I'm going to hit on this is just appreciation of your culture. So every player, every coach needs to know that they're valued. They need to know that they're seen. They need to know that they're heard. And to me, when we say community first, that's the most important thing. People, every, everybody wants the same things. You know, they want to they be respected. They want to be loved. They want to be appreciated. They want to contribute. So we have to appreciate not only the culture that we're creating, but the people in it, the community that we've formed. And we have to continue to pour into that to pour that energy into that so that that's what we get back. Because when we talk about the culture, that's what you feel, right? It's that labor of love that you've created something that's special. That's special because the people that are involved in it are just dynamite and you're letting them know that all the time. Um, and then just certain values that are related to self and other self-awareness, self-reliance, self-esteem, just all these little things that you can, whatever, whatever it is that you're trying to build, just think about what it is. What are the values? What are the attitudes that you want to see and then form it based on that? Kim, did you have anything? Sorry, I was. No, I know that they much. have a few that they need to ask us, but you know, everything that we've presented today, of course, you know, we're talking about our communities and, and clubs and programs, but these can be implement, implemented into your life. You know what I mean? So um, I'm hoping that everybody takes away something positive from this. And, it, and if not, make sure you look at that PowerPoint again, because there's got to be something in there that, that's grabbed you. I mean, about such a, a passionate topic with, with leadership within, the, within your club, your community, within your life, in the culture. I mean, this is all good stuff. And, and again, I mean, we, we love the game. We love giving back to the game, but we also are all about impacting lives through the sport, through this game. So I'm gonna let Alicia and Angela go and do their thing now. <laughs> Um, are, well, are you, are you done, Nicole? Are, do you have more slides you want to go through? We first? have a couple more. Yeah, we can, we're pretty much done. There's just this one last one and then we can go straight into questions. Okay. Um, so this is just strategic object of objectives. So just, you know, identifying personal and organization values. I got this from Disney guys. This is Disney. <laughs> <laughs> um, create alignment between your personal values and vision and those of, of the business or team. Share a, a, a compelling vision for the future that drives action today. Understand the values infused role of a leader in culture building and team support. And then the last one here is sustain your organization's uh, values and visits during their during uh, times of change. So I'm actually gonna stop the, the share here and we can kind of just jump straight into Q&A. Um, that was phenomenal. And definitely I'm gonna reiterate, we need the slides and we need <laughs> uh -huh. to share them to everybody um, <laughs> because I definitely learned quite a bit. Um, I wanna kind of take it a little bit farther and ask you what you think about women coaching girls and how can we get more and why it's important? It's so important. Representation, I think, and, I, and I'm going to take it to race first because it's the same, um, because it's, it's the reason why I started this league, the Rochester City Soccer League. Um, and it's also, it's, it, there's an interesting story that happened just recently. Um, when I was in, in high school, I was playing for the Rochester Ravens um, and I had already, you know, I had a I was going to have a full scholarship to the University of Albany. So one of the coaches for one of the inner city leagues that was around at that time, it doesn't exist anymore, um, came up to me and said, you know, you need to be working with kids in the city. And so I kind of dismissed it. You know, I'm playing and doing my thing. I'm playing. Abby, by the way, I'm, I'm going to, Abby Wombat played for the Ravens. So shout out to Rochester. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> it's one of those things where um, 
when I did, I came back from college and I did do a session with a group of kids and I didn't know how to coach at that point, but I really needed these kids to buy into what I knew best. And I love Brazilian soccer. So I'm a dribbler. So I was like, let me get these kids buy into like the repetition of skill work. Cause that's how I learned. Um, so I gave the kids two minutes to try to take the ball off of my foot. And after like a minute and 30 seconds, they couldn't do it. So we sat down, we were talking, um, at the end of the talk, one of the girls looked at me, black girl. And she said, where are you from? It still hits me the same way. Where are you from? And she said that because she's never seen a black person in this country play soccer. And she didn't think it was for her. So for me, at any time, I don't care what race you are, I don't care what gender you are, but if you can't see yourself and it's that bad where you're not seeing yourself anywhere, so you don't think you can do it, we have a big problem. And it's the same on the women's side. Um, I have a, with our, our club this year, I, I'm trying to step away so that I can do more on the fundraising side and things like that. And um, I was telling my operations coordinator, I was like, you know, I got to bring some new coaches and things like that. And she turned to me and she, she's like, look at these, these parents here. It's like, why do you think they come here? They come here for us. Because you see two women of color who look like the kids, they reflect it. And it's something that's different. And we have kids of all races and things like that, but everyone fits in, everyone vibes well, but it's a different look and it's a different feel. So when it comes to women coaching girls, it's the same thing. It's the same thing with seeing women in leadership positions. So when you see Leslie Galmore as the commissioner of the GA, that's important. When you see the board, the, the youth board that they put together, that's important. That's what empowerment is. There are so many people who will use that word and it drives me crazy. And I'm, I'm, I become a pit bull when I see these fake groups that are, oh, empowerment, this and that. Empowerment means giving power. Sometimes it means giving your power, right? I'm, I'm probably a black elite woman, right? I can go home at night and not have to worry about things, but I can't do that. Because there's voiceless and powerless people that if I don't use my, my resources and my access to help others, it, nothing happens, right? It comes from a care and a labor of love. So for many of us who are out there, if you're a woman and you, you, know, you have that administrative ability, so these young girls who are coming up can see you doing this and be like, man, I can do that. I love mm -hmm. what the GA is doing. I love what many of these groups are doing because they're showing what's possible. And if you can see it, Carla Thompson, who won our Black Excellency Award, says it all the time. She's a uh, U.S. soccer educator. If you can see it, you can be it. So we have to see it more. And this amazing program. So, yeah. <laughs> and I concur uh, all the sorry. way. And having summits like this, Alicia and Angela, I mean, this is amazing. I mean, for, for those that are on the outside looking in, this is perfect. I mean, we need to have more. We need to have more you know, uh, events like these so that the, the young girls can see this and, and hear this and know this and believe this. So, mm -hmm. but yes, I can girl, you said everything. <laughs> oh, I see, I see Courtney in here. Courtney from Women in Soccer. I got to give her a shout out though. She starts, so let me, let me shout Courtney out. Uh, but I'm just looking at the comments here. I just want to make sure that we're not missing anything. Um, Oh, sorry, continue. I was like, give any more. Well, we have to make sure that people sign up for Women in Soccer too. Free membership, right. womeninsoccer.org. So make sure you sign up. <laughs> I'm going to put their link right here in the chat. Okay. So everybody awesome. can just click on it. Uh, Nicole, um, I am so inspired what you said. Um, I, and I'm wondering, because you, you're definitely, you're both mentors. So do you look at the girls you coach right now and do you try to select some that you feel you can pass along some of your experience and knowledge to and hope that they will stay in the game and pass it along? That's I'll, I'll what start I, with oh, that. Go ahead, I, I, Kim, yeah, please I, do. Yeah, I know that I do um, because I don't have as many females as I do males within my program. So um, I just started at an all-girls school brand new, fresh, fresh team. Um, and one of the girls from my outreach program goes to the school. So, you know, naturally she's been playing in my outreach program with tons of guys. Her game is, is escalated mm -hmm. to a degree where she's at a level that I can't say that I put her there, but I put her in a position that she could get there. So 
you know, I just continue empowering and inspiring and impacting and, and with hopes that, you know, perhaps, you know, I mean, if you can pass that baton on. So yeah, I feel like that I'm kind of grooming the, the, the ones that I have um, definitely, so. And Kim's one of the people I reach out to. So Kim, when you think about what it was like for Kimberly Crabb to be the first mm -hmm. African-American woman to play on the US national team, it's, there's times when I'm like heated about things and Kim's one of the people that I, I call as a sounding board. So it's not even just her players, I call Kim sometimes. Or vice versa. <laughs> yeah, but, but it's, it goes both ways, right? It's kind of yeah. like the iron sharpened iron type thing. But my kids, um, I, they're just something else. And I'll tell you what I love the most about my league and, and my boys do it, my girls do it too. But um, the boys, because they see what we do in empowering communities, our Somali community, they throw tournaments and they bring resources back to their community. Um, mm -hmm. Our Nepali, Karen, they do the same thing um, because they've recognized the power of using the sport for social change mm -hmm. in their communities with people that yeah. they love and they value. So for me, mm -hmm. the most important thing is when I see people replicating what it is that you do, because that is what it all, it's all about, but they replicate it in a way that represents them that's important to them. So as you're, you know, you're mentoring kids. And for me, I'm looking at it differently before we would pick a couple kids who would come to me and be like, I want to learn. Um, now I want every single kid to have that in them where it's like a seed, right? And we got to make sure that we're allowing that seed to grow as best as it can. Um, so we have to pour in, into these kids. So that's why I always say a labor of love and care. It's the most important thing because when your kids and your players know that you love them and you care them and you, you know they're mm -hmm. beasts and you shout them out every time that they're doing amazing things, you make sure the whole world, the city, the mayor knows that these kids are the, the I was about to swear, sorry, I don't swear. <laughs> 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 that they're amazing human beings. Um, God, they'll, they, they just, not only do they, can you set a standard for them, but they supersede that standard because people believe in them. Mm -hmm. You know, people can see them differently. And I, I actually have to chill out sometimes because I don't see people as who they are. I see them as who I think they will be. So sometimes mm -hmm. I have to remember to come back to where they are because I get tough on them when they're not meeting that standard sometimes. So sometimes I have to yeah. remind myself to meet them where they are, but I know the potential and it's always ridiculous. And I've never been disappointed with any of the kids that I've coached. They're all just, they make me better because they're just that good. They're just mm -hmm. that good. Um, you mentioned that you're getting into fundraising more, Nicole. Mm -hmm. So where, where do most of your funds come? Is it private and how can people help you? Um, uh, yeah, well, for me, I have a relationship with our city. So we're aligned with our city, city recreation and city council. And the great thing about it is before when I first started, um, I was going in and having the meetings with the mayor and different things like that. Um, and now my kids do it. So when we went with city council, and we got probably the most funding that we got. I might have been the introduction. My kids went in there and got that money, you know, so they've literally helped to build our league. Um, so they have ownership and investment in what it is that we've created. Um, so we have our relationship with the city. We have a couple sponsors. Um, but yeah, we definitely need to do more because what we're trying to do for the next phase is to create a full-time program from 3.30 to 9.30, um, where again, we have uh, college advisement, we have academic support. Um, we have, we work, I want to shout out University of Rochester because they put so much time and effort with our kids, like the women's team, uh, Nazareth men's team, um, RIT. We have a relationship with the, the colleges around. Our city is amazing. A lot of people have to pay for permits and things like that. Our city gives us the stadium for our kids oh, to have an opportunity. Nice. They can make a lot of money off of that, but they invest in our kids. They choose our kids first. Um, but again, all of that is leadership. All of that is the culture that you're building because when everyone can see that you mean what you say and you live it, they try to do everything that they can to make it happen. But yeah, funding's wonderful. Our children will need that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I am right there. I, I am the nonprofit side of the club. So I'm Me always too. looking for a sponsor <laughs> or I beg a lot. I do a lot of begging, <laughs> but, um, but seriously, you know, I put on a couple annual events and, you know, it's amazing if you ask, you know, there are those that will, will help and will give. So, but it, it's for me as a program director to have a, flat out 
sponsor that I know that I can depend on every, every year. That would make my life easier. I wouldn't be bald, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I would have some hair on my head, but I mean, seriously, but I go above and beyond because I believe in what I'm doing, you know, in the program and, and the passion is not going to change. And, and so I'll do what, whatever is necessary, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm at the Wilmington Hammerheads Youth FC, you know, we're always looking for a pledger. Um, it's all set up on the, on the website. And, you know, of course, those are things that, that programs such as ours um, need to sustain, you know. Mm -hmm. And talking about sustaining programs, I have to shout out a Louise Waxler, who is probably the GOAT, the GOAT as a, a female director of a club that is just, it's monstrous what she's able to manage. Sorry, she's like, no, but we have to shout her out because she's she's a huge star. She's a huge star. We can't, I can't see her in the comments and not say, whoa, you know. My so. Northern Virginian, that's right, from Northern Virginia. I grew up with, with Miss Waxler, so. Nice. Talk about well, a standard. Talk about a standard that was set. <laughs> mm -hmm. What um, I think uh, we're going to wrap up soon, but and, and Angela might have some more questions also. Always. I kind of want to. Yeah. Well, we could be here for quite a while. I think um, this, this is fun. <laughs> I, I'm loving it. <laughs> what What are some hopes then uh, that you have for yourself and for others and how can more people get involved? How, what do you see the future of soccer and for girls especially and women? And how can we keep going? How can we support each other? I, and I'm sorry, that's a super loaded I, I'm gonna I love be, it. I'm gonna go, I'll be real quick because I know we're on the, on the Gucci right now. But, you know, I, again, it's just going to keep going back to events such as this and, and just to keep regurgitating to everybody, you know, the importance um, of programs, community programs, um, the importance of female leadership within the sport, whether you're coaching, whether you're behind the scenes, um, it goes back to building a good team. And, and right now, you know, you guys are all new. I, I'm just meeting you, but I consider you part of the team. You know, we're not, you know, like so you, you just, you start, you start building a good team and believing in what you're doing and, you know, hoping that we, we make it better for, for female you know, females in the game, making the game better, you know, as a ex national team player, I feel like it's my duty to give back. And, um, and this is how I do it. Yeah, and I'm going to co sign on that. Again, there's always these spaces where you can see where when people are, are authentic to what the cause is. And it's for me, it's always equal in the playing field, whether it's for, for, for people of color, whether it's for girls. Um, it's always and, and building the relationships because some people aren't going to be in alignment with what it is that we're doing um but the most important thing that i i think about as we're doing this is collaboration like we're just seeing what you guys are doing shouting out women in soccer i'm actually going to shout out at a football that got the the branding rights for um the women's uh you know the the super league and and over in Europe and they're they're broadcasting games so that young yep. girls have access to top tier. But it's mm -hmm. two women, our good friends Esmeralda um, Negra and um, Hannah Brown, phenomenal people who are doing this because they love the mm -hmm. community that they're working with. They want to impact change, and they're doing it. And they're with ESPN and and, and MSNBC and um, NBC, um, but it's a huge groundbreaking thing that they're doing and we have to continue to support people that we see doing the work, even if it's similar, um, lift each other up because the girls are watching. They're watching us, right? So we have to make sure that we're doing things in that landscape and that we have plans um, for how we, we're gonna move together. I know as, as I'm saying this, I was like, God, we have so much stuff that we do for inner city and for the black soccer coaches, but we need to be doing the same on the, on the girl side. We definitely need to be doing having the same collaborations on the girl side. And I'm sorry, I forgot your question, so I just kept talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going with it, so I, I your hopes, and I guess what, what yeah. you would like to see, how you'd like to see the landscape of soccer, and how to see more of the equal playing field. Mm. I think we're seeing it. I think we're seeing it. We're seeing yeah. a lot of, and I'm, I'm sorry, I, I can't believe I didn't shout out because um, I'm doing a session with Lindsay Kaufman next week. Right. Um, but she has a program that's all for girls. 
you know, seeing more of that, more women who are stepping up, taking the charge to create things. Again, we talked about that pioneering leader. If you, and I, this is, okay, so let me hit you guys with a little something. <laughs> when it comes to making a message, right, you have to look for a mess, right? And that's where your message comes from. So there's something that you don't like, you need to clean it up. You create a message out of that. And then when it comes to what your mission is, if there's something that's being missed, you make an act should plan on how you're going to make sure that it won't be missed again. You, you literally, you literally connect the lines to what needs to be created so that you can clean, you can clean up the mess and you can, you, you won't miss that mark again. That's part, part of what your mission becomes. Um, so I'm as an entrepreneur and as a, a bit of a free spirit, I don't like systems that I see that either oppress people or that limit opportunities for girls or even uh -huh. limit the ideas of what girls can do. I will create a new space because it's unacceptable to limit anyone's God-given potential. We can't do that. Okay. So yeah, that's the way I look at it. That's very well said. Oh, I'm going to, there's one, um, one question from um, the audience and then I'll pass it back to Angela to wrap it up. Um, so this is an anonymous person. How are you keeping your leadership training for your teams going during COVID? Mm. It's funny. It actually came <laughs> to me. But um, one of my friends who, who hosts Weasel FC, Tony Nicosa, I say his last name wrong, but anyhow, be the Beautiful Game podcast. Um, I aligned with, I'm going to align with Tovo um, Institute. They sponsored a couple of the, the coaches from my um, Black Soccer Co Coaches group. And I was looking at what they do. And I was like, this is perfect for my league where we have parents and kids who are coming up or we have a lot of kids who are studying sports management and stuff like that. Um, so we've had set up some coaching education that we have set up for our kids. Um, but I want something like that. That's more consistent throughout the year to engage our kids, especially because we don't know what's happening with COVID. Um, so I would like for my coaches and our players who are coming up to be able to, to train remotely um, as we're waiting to see what's happening. And myself, I, I, you know, I hate to say I've been trying to just remain the face of the community because um, I've been behind the, behind the scenes. I drop off composition notebooks in the middle of the night because my sleeping pattern was off and I know that I really can't be in, you know, direct contact with my kids. I'm dropping off groceries. Um, I, I'm just, you know, I'm trying to do what I can. Um, I'm just about to share three weeks, three Sundays, of soccer. I wasn't, I wasn't able to do much with my outreach. Um, some of my kids that are playing at the next level for the club were able to go to practices and such, but because I do a lot of my stuff through the city and the county, when this shut down, it shut down. So, you know, I just really made um, a big effort to make sure that I let them know that I cared and and, you know, like I said, dropping off a composition notebook and inscribing it and telling them to write their story or dropping off a book for them to read or when they got up the next day, you know, because most of them couldn't go past their trailer lot, you know, because they, they couldn't be out in the community. But, um, you know, it, it, you know it, inviting them to, if I'm on a Zoom, if they're able and have access to that, but just doing what you can, you know, to keep everybody afloat and keep your team and your community um, together. Right on. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. We're going to, we're a little bit past the hour, but we could, I mean, I'm sure we could ask you guys questions and just listen to you. Or I, yeah, I, I wish you were around when, you know, years and years ago, because you are so inspiring. Let's I do it again. <laughs> we will, we will. And so, and the point of this is to bring everybody together, right. To bring all the folks, all the women and the girls in soccer mm -hmm. from different right, from different industries, players, coaches, you know, those entrepreneurs and what have you together. So this, this is how we at America Scores there are, are trying to do that, especially during this time. Um, and I will, I got to plug women in soccer again, just because I think that is a great tool for all mm -hmm. of us to come together. Um, so be members. At the end of the summit, we're going to do a closing session. We're going to bring the themes in that we've heard uh, from everybody. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're asking you, what do you want to see change? Um, because we want to bring those to this summit and we want to see change and we want to give the attendees ways mm -hmm. to get involved and take action. There's a Senate bill on the table for after school programming, right? Some funding. So anybody who's attending, we're going to send you that link, spread it out. Let's support programs that Kim and Nicole are running. Uh, America scores. 
cannot thank you guys enough. Stay tuned for the next sessions. Uh, I think we have Alicia's Breaking Down Barriers, right? Breaking with down Terry barriers. Taylor. Yeah. Right. Awesome. Kim White, Wyatt and Tori Penso, right? Yep. Um, Be so, a great session. Alicia, Wonderful. thank you Absolutely. again for putting this together. It's amazing. And Kim, Nicole, like I'm so much respect on behalf of scores and community. Thank you, ladies. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. For you guys, so empowering. Kim, yep. Nicole, you you two are so awesome. I am. Um, <laughs> I am proud that you're in my Rolodex now. <laughs> don't don't at my don't at my fro any bigger. No? We are a team. <laughs> my fro is going to pop out well, further and that, further. That's it. It's the team. I'm I'm Absolutely. I'm here to get the team together. So yeah, I love Absolutely. it. You're the organizer. You got it together, and we appreciate what you guys are doing. We know the work um, is tough when we work in these communities where it's, it's needed. Um, so we work hard. Kim and I were up all night because we believe in what it is that you guys are doing. Um, we want more people to be empowered to do that. So we're very intentional about what we present. Um, and we're very thankful for people like yourselves who create these, use your platform for, for the greater good. It's, it, it gets everybody fired up. So we're all at our best when, when everyone's doing their part. Thank you. Right on. Yeah, all right. Thank Have you. Have a beautiful so day. Guys, take Stay care, safe. guys. Stay safe, everyone. And come back for more sessions. Have a great day.